friends, thank you for watching my channel. I just want to remind you if you need wallpaper, go to www.wallpaperboulevard.com. Tell them Spencer sent you. In fact, if you use my hashtag, Spencer Colgan is wallpaper, they'll be sure to give you a 10% off at your checkout. No matter how much you order, they have a wide selection of wallpaper. Check it out. Tell them I said hello. Hi, this is Spencer Colgan and welcome back to my YouTube channel on wallpaper and painting. You've done your spraying with your airless sprayer and now you're not so sure how to clean out the machine and set it up for storage. What I'm going to show you here is the procedures to take to, st to set your sprayer up for storage. Not to be using it two days from now or a week from now. This is for storage. You may not be using it for a month. Okay, if that's you, this video is for you. This is an airless sprayer. It's a Graco 395. I've had it for a little over 10 years. It's an excellent baseline sprayer for the professional. This will get the job done. The more money you spend on airless sprayers, the more capacity they have to spray more gallons. That's the difference. And so let's get to the parts that we need to know about. On off. Prime. Would have been nice if I took that out before the video, right? Prime is down. Spray is this way. This works for most sprayers out there on the market. Down is always going to be prime. This is my pressure switch. Okay. This is my inlet. And this is my outlet. I've sprayed. The system has paint in it. We have to get the paint out. So we're going to begin by drawing, drawing in clean water and clearing out the hose and the machine. So let's do it. I have clear water in here. I'm going to take clear water in, start clearing out the machine. I need to turn my pressure up and I need to put my outlet in a place that can receive waste paint. Now, the homeowner of this property isn't concerned with the grass because he owns the property. So if you have a customer, you wouldn't do this on their property. You would get yourself some containers or you'd just take it home and do it. So I wanna turn my pressure up and put it on prime because I need to clear out the system. And so expect white paint to come out of here.
it usually takes no more than two minutes. You'll start seeing it become clearer and clearer. Believe it or not, for some guys, this would be clean enough. If that's you, let me know in the comments section below. As we continue to purge the system, let's check the filter. Gotta clean that. Okay. And we have one other filter in the gun. After about two minutes, if your water is clear to your liking, stop. Half the work is over. Now we wanna clear the hose. And the way to do that is turn on the sprayer like you're spraying. So we have to come down to the primer spray switch, put it on spray. Then we need to turn our pressure all the way up. Okay, if this happens to you, this is what I'd like you to do. While the piston is moving, you're going to put throat seal in there. Okay, and then we're going to shut it off. Okay. You rarely, if ever, want to open this up. You'll see what looks like a pinball in there going up and down. That's what causes the pressure when it seats in a receptacle, it creates a vacuum. That ball is not seating properly because it's got gunk in it. But hopefully that throat seal will get it out of there, okay? There's nothing you cannot fix with what I'm showing you. So let's try to clear it ourselves with throat seal. Okay. It's not building up pressure. <laughs> this is what I've done sometimes. I simply lift the machine up and drop it. Just about 12 inches up from the ground. Let's see if that does it. The ball is stuck. And I'm glad it happened on video. I don't want to open this thing up. I told Graco, hey, I opened it up. They said, why'd you do that? Don't do that. You can do it, but they don't want people who aren't technicians opening it up. You could actually, I guess, disrupt the seals or something. But let's see if that did anything. I've also taken a wrench with the rubber on it and banged it down here. Let's try that. Let's see if that did anything. Nope. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Okay, all right, all right. Okay, now we're going to simulate spraying, getting all of the paint out of the hose. 
Okay, my water got contaminated during that procedure. So, we're filling it up again. As long as you're past the net, we can start sucking in water to avoid the hose of its contents. Now we have it in spray mode, right? See, it's in spray mode. We have it on high pressure. She's ready to go. Now, I don't want spray all over my grass. So, here's what I should do. I'm gonna fill this up with water and I'm going to discharge at least the first minute into the water. Let me fill this up with some water. If I don't fill it up with water, it's gonna come back in my face. <laughs> okay, here's what I mean, look. You see, we don't want that all over the place. So, you get the point, right? Okay. So now, at least the tip is buried. I can start spraying into this. All right? I mean, you'll come up with your own procedures. The problem happened again, so I simply dropped it into prime, put it in spray mode. It happens, believe me, there's, there's nothing wrong with your sprayer. When you're new at this, oh, you think, oh my goodness, something's wrong with my sprayer. There's a big learning curve to using an airless sprayer. Okay, I think I could take it out of the, uh, I think I could take it out of here. Just to show you how long do you think this is going to take. You see, it's mostly water, even though it's white. This way you have an idea of when you can stop. There we go again. Oh, oh. Okay. And as the water gets clearer, obviously you can use it to clean up the mess you made, right? Now, some of you are saying, like my extremely good at painting and wallpaper man up in Michigan, Dan Child is saying, Spencer, Spencer, you're doing too much work. Dan is a veteran painter and wallpaper guy whose opinions, I, I expect that he's gonna make a comment on this video. We spoke recently about painting ceilings. The guy is amazing knowledge, amazing. Okay, so I'm good, right? It's clear, you agree? Okay, let's clean out the filters. So this tip, whatever tip you're using, we've had the spray orifice exposed now we had it. We I'm going to turn it around to turn it on to the degunker. That's the bigger orifice. And once you see a, a nice flow there, you know that your tip is clean. You don't want paint drying in there. Okay. Now, if you, you if you, you do get paint in there, let me show you what to do. You've seen these in the paint store, right? Using a nylon one first, you degunk it. You get in there. Turn it around. Degunk it. If that doesn't work, go to a wire brush. They both look the same. They both do different jobs. The wire one can damage your spray tip. And you know these things can cost around 50 bucks. So you don't want to press too hard, but it will get the gunk out. Okay, taking the pressure off of the system... You see, I have it in prime. I can now undo my threaded spray gun tip to get to the filter. It's in here. But with the pressure on, 
I have, to, I can't get in there. So I had to shut the pressure off. And now let me get to this filter. See, it's threaded. So now I expose. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Guys, clean this thing out. It's only nine or 10 bucks, but you know what? You don't want that in your hose. Before putting this clean filter back in now, I want to clean out the top part of this hose by again, using it as a sprayer. Okay, so let's, let's turn it on to spray. And let's get that water out. Let's make sure this hose is pushing out nice clear water. You see, this is where our filter is sitting, like this. So, you want to get all that paint off, okay? And that'll clean out the top of your hose. Once you're satisfied that you have nice clear water, shut it off. Okay? Now we can put the filter back in the housing and thread our spray gun back together. The filter simply goes inside like this. Take note. That's the part that's sticking up. Now we're going to take our threaded spray gun. See it's threaded? We're going to put it back onto here. I don't take the housing off. I leave it there. One, it tells me where the tip is when I need it again. And as long as you cleaned it out, it's good to go. I put my trigger guard back on. It goes right in there. And the only thing I'm going to do now to protect the tip is to make sure that when it's in storage, nothing hits it. You see how the hole is exposed? Let me show you what I do. I turn it a quarter turn. And if you can't see an orifice there, you're protecting both of them. I'll get that little paint out of there with my fingernail after we go to the next frame. This is how your tip should look for storage. See how clean both of them are? Now we store it like that. Now we have the big filter. Hmm, not too bad, but I'm gonna hose this off. The filter comes off of this thing. Let me get that off. Reuse this at least twice, giving you three uses of the same material. I sift it twice. So I hose that off and I'm ready to put it back in. Now my system is 98% clean. You know what I like to do now? I pour lubricant down here. Call me a fanatic, but that's what I like to do. I pour it down here. This is an important part of the sprayer. So now I'm going to, for now, close this up. I'm gonna create a vacuum because we're going to now do with the machine with lubricant what we do with the machine with our paint. I'm gonna fill it up. Let's do it. Okay. We're gonna take our inlet and put it in. 
our lubricant. So I'm going to turn my sprayer on. Prime. Isn't that what we're doing? And when I see it coming out here pink, I know that this part of the system is filled. Do you notice I'm not wasting any lubricant? I can use this. Okay. Now we're going to switch it to the sprayer mode. We're going to put this through the rest of the machine and the hose itself. And that's how we're going to store it. Now, I don't need the outlet separated from the inlet, right? And I don't have to waste this. If you want this part of the job to go quickly, put it on the larger orifice so that the material will come out a lot quicker. Now we're going to turn, keep this off for now, turn it to spray, and now let's get some fluid through the hose. Let me clean that out so that when we see red, we know we're good. Now, I should have clear water in here. For, this, for the same reason, we don't want the, the lubricant spraying us in the face, right? But we can start doing it because it looks like I have enough in there already. The nice thing about using a black bucket is that when it stops being clear, we know it's lubricant coming out, right? There we go. See, it's a little pink. Let's get it a lot pink. There you have it, right? As long as you're sure you have lubricant in there, which we know we do, right? Okay, you're convinced, I'm convinced. And lo and behold, we still have some lubricant left over. And if I do, here's what I do. I turn the pressure off. I keep this pressure down, take off the filter cover, okay, and I want to fill that up with lubricant. So, I want lubricant filled up to the top there. Okay, then I'm going to take my inlet and my outlet and store them together with the entire 50 feet of the hose pressed down into this bucket. Because as you can see, they got to travel together. Before you unplug your sprayer, make sure that your pressure's off and most importantly, that this knob is down and on prime because you want there to be no pressure on your seals because your system is now filled with fluid, right? So take the pressure off of the seals by keeping it down. How do you guys do it? Is this your first time using a sprayer? Let me know in the comments. If you're a veteran paper, uh, painter what do you think about this sprayer
What do you use? What's your favorite sprayer? Titan, Graco, which one? Maybe you got another one. Thanks for watching the video. Please comment. Please like, and if you like these videos, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching. watching.